Kia ora, welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm sitting here with my friend, Nick Sinnott, and we hope you enjoy this episode. <laughs> Kia ora, bro. Thank you Yala. so much for coming on. Um, I guess the, the first place to start would just be, you know, ko ai koe no he koe. All right, see. <coughs> Kia ora, um, ko Nick Sinnott tōku ingoa huri tēnei o Ngāti Tūwhare Toa. Um, no reira, ko tonga reo te maunga, ko taupu nei atia te mona, ko Tūwhare Toa te iwi, ko te heu heu te tangata. Uh, he tawira here oku hoki, kia Ngāti Kahungunu ki Tākitimu Waka, um, Ngāti Kahungunu ki te wairua, um, taihoa marai Ngāti Waiaha. No reira, te nākoe. Te nākoe. Oh, thank you for that. And I, I think it's always a, a beautiful place to start. Um, and I guess it's it's probably a first that we've ever really had and been able to to start off um, in an episode like this. And I think um, for a lot of people listening and you know hearing the significance of you know the different places, the different uh, people you affiliate to. So for you. Uh, for those people who you know wouldn't have quite understood what you were saying, or even the significance of that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just just bring us in with that. Well, yeah. So that was my favorite heart, my mihi mihi, mm. talking about my um, actually my great grandma's connection to Topo, um, up in Central North Island, and her grandma's connection to uh, Ngati Kahungunu to Wairua on the east coast. And um, I didn't even say in any of that, like where I grew up or anything like that, because I grew up in. Wānaka, mm. in, the, in like central Otago, so mm. other end of the country to where my whakapapa is from, mm. which is, you know, for actually quite a lot of us are like that now, we don't always get to grow up on the marae, but um, yeah, it's, that was that was my mihi mihi, that's my um, indigenous way of introducing myself. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and hearing you speak and, you know, the pride and I guess the, the sense of, of belonging and, and you know, it's part of our identity and something that I'm very big on and speaking about with this podcast is, is having that connection and it's, and it's finding yourself through you know that journey of self discovery sure. and knowing that stuff and and kind of working towards you know what it actually means to be from this moment or to be from this tangata yeah yeah so yeah. for you you know has it always been something that when when you recited it that's like you immediately could see the affiliation no well i mean my pepe has changed a lot since i first started to speak and kind of use it widely um especially since i've done a lot of more fucka papa research and mm. found out my other connections to other iwi and things like that mm. and so yeah i mean um in terms of when i started using my people and things like that um it was quite different than a lot of other maori speakers is that i never grew up with the deal mm. and uh, well not that different there's heaps of people who for sure grew up like that now but you know i, I didn't start speaking until i was like 12 and I, there's no other speakers in my whanau mm. so um i've just been encouraging my whanau to, to to pick it up over the last like 10 years so yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah, which is was, it's worked. My dad's picking it up now, mm. and um, my brother's always keen on it. So yeah, and um, yeah, just really trying to bring it into my whanau more because it was a bit disconnected that's for been, a while. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, then I think that's a that's probably what we're going to base a lot of this episode around yeah, because sure. you know there's there's multiple things that come off that. Like any any adventure, I guess, where you're where you're trying to learn something or just trying to spread something as well. Like that. There's going to come learnings. There's going to be things that you know you picked up that you can see are applied elsewhere. There's going to be things that are, were extreme challenges for you as well. So you know, at twelve, so you having to pick up another language. What was the catalyst for that? Um, well, I went through the the schooling system, and so I was I was in class, and I was like, oh man, this is really cool. I really actually enjoy speaking the deal and, and things like that. And I had a really really cool teacher um, at my school, and then um, Dad started to tell me a little bit more about our fucker public because we never really talked about it. It was just like, oh yeah. Yeah, never understood. I had a reason to sure. explain it to us, I suppose. So, um, and once I figured that out and started to learn more about my iwi and things like that, then it kind of set me off and mm. just never looked back. And then, yeah, last year did the um, Te Pūnaki Tanga ki Te Reo Kairangi. That mm. was the um, the bit I thought was like the end point for me, but it's just been the start. It, mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it like, kind of opened up the world to for me. For sure, eh? It's like it's like most things, you know. Once you get that little taste, you start realizing I'm always learning. Yeah, for the rest of your life, you're always yep. learning. Yep, and there's always people better than you. In this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now, um, so through high school and stuff, with was there always avenues for you to to keep upskilling? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a dire shortage of Maori teachers in the mm -hmm. country. Um, so it, the resources were a little bit limited. Um. I went, came from Wānaka to um, Otago Boys, went to the hostel there from year 10. Mm. And um, that was pretty cool coming to the city. There was more real uh, resources available. Sure. But, I mean, we we um, we 
kind of learnt everything that we could from that coulda and at the time. And so we actually went outside of the class there and went to Te Wānanga, Okay. which is I started ghosting the immersion classes there and just slowly, slowly, yeah, yeah, got into it properly. Awesome. And do you think like in terms of ages? So because now that you're, we're probably just jumping all over the place, but you know now yeah, that yeah. you're in a position where you're starting to uh, be a tutor and starting to teach other people coming through, um, like do you feel? quite glad that it was a, a, you know, one of those young formative ages where you decided that was something you wanted to go through? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it gives me a different perspective to some people. Like, I understand what it's like to be a second language learner, even though I was, you know, still quite young mm. when I started learning compared to some of the people that I teach. But it's, um, yeah, I understand it, it's, it's hard when your parents can't speak and mm. when you might be the only one in your whanau. Like, mm. I've got a person I'm tutoring at the moment who's the only, soon to be the only deal speaker in their whanau. So... Mm. The, uh, you know, that's obviously the whānau always super, super supportive and jealous as well that yeah, they, yeah, yeah. you know, they want to get in on it, which is awesome. But no, nah, my my upbringing and, and my journey gives me an appreciation of that. And, yeah. that, and that's where, you know, what is it, like 80% of Māori speakers are at at the moment, you know, mm. they've got to be second language learners or, mm. yeah. Yeah, and because through that, I mean, there's there's multiple things that people have to go through and I think that's, you know, where a lot of people are and it's not just on a real journey, it's it's on you know, anything where if someone wants to pick up a habit and that's for, like, the betterment of themselves, their whanau, and everyone else, like, all the generations after that, mm. you know, like, I, so I came from, my, my background is exercise physiology, yeah. and that's where I did all my study, and it was just getting people more active, and it was a lot of people knowing that this is what they need to do, that they know they will be better off for it, but there's almost like a, you know, that fucking ma that they don't have it. Yeah. Yeah, and they know that it's it's going to be a good thing, but then once people realise, oh, you don't have it, you know, they there's so many things that they have to contend with. That's huge. Yeah, so <clears throat> for you, you know, knowing that you were going and acquiring it younger, like, was that ever a thought in your mind, or was it always just like, this is a positive thing? No, t- when I was 13, I didn't think about it that deeply. I just, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, oh, I suppose I did. Like, I always felt um, that to deal connected me to my tūpuna and a group of people, um, most of whom I hadn't met, you know, on the other side of the country. Right. But because we had the same whakapapa mm. and because, you know, we were from the same marae that I was I was connected to those people. And I got a cool story about about um, reconnecting with my marae, actually. Yeah, yeah. After living down in Te Waipounamu, um, uh, we, a couple of summers ago, we went up to Taupo and... I was just kind of I didn't really have any connections to mm-hmm. my but I knew where it was and how to get there but I, I kind of just going to knock on the door and be like kia ora I'm da 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 right. son you know um, but we ran into some people at the farmer's market and, and I spoke Māori to some ladies who were managing the recycling and they mm. said oh you know kapai <laughs> and then um, and then my partner's like hey you should go back and ask them about the what are and I went and asked them and they said oh yeah we'll call blah 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 and then mm. next thing you know like one of my um, like second cousins is came around and, and 10 minutes later we're following them like 20 minutes out of town <laughs> to go to the marae and they had this huge um, whānau event on. I, mm. met, I met them all and I stood up and I gave my story. But I told them about what, you know, growing up away from that whenua mm. and I told them about my, my, my kōro's mum mm. and all that story and then me and my partner got up and sang a while and we just cried, bro. Mm. It was, yeah, it was, it was huge. Yeah. yeah. It's that, it's those those powerful things eh? and, and there's things that, that draw you back, like you, you don't even know that it's happening, but then you realise like, oh, like yeah. I was in the right place at the right time, but someone put me there, or something put yeah. me there. Did you feel that, like, you know, when you started to feel that energy come through you, that that sort of thing was happening? Yeah, it was a, it was like a long time leading up to that moment, eh, mm. to, to go back, and now that, now like they know my face, mm. and I can take my brothers there, mm. and I can say, hey, this is your aunties and uncles, and you know, things like that, and which is cool. Mm. Yeah. No, oh, that's oh man, you almost get shivers just yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Because that's you know that's the sort of thing that I think when people listen to this, um, and it's not that you know anyone's going to go out and just become fluent straight away, but mm. it's just that like you know there are there is always a time to go back, and it's almost like regardless of who you are, if they know your face or if they know your name, at least you know no one's going to ever push you away. Yeah, like it's always always happy with open arms to bring you back in. Which is, oh man, it's awesome. Yeah. You know what else it did for me is that since, ever since that day, I just, all I want to do is when I graduate, just going back and work for the Iwi. Mm. It just like set, put that seed in to yeah. just make me want to go and spend more time there and yeah. so that my children can, can grow up around that stuff that, you know, yeah, 
But I suppose, actually, because of my upbringing, I know that I can live anywhere in the country and they can still be connected yeah. to their to their fuck up Yeah, you yeah. You don't have to live where your iwi is, but I mean, it's nice to go back there and actually <laughs> show face and you know what do they say? Etu kito maunga, pude ai nga ho. I probably butchered that, but yeah, um, it's it it is something very significant to actually stand on your maunga and stand mm. in your moana and mm. yeah. Mm, and get cleansed by the winds of Tafidima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so with that, you know, you, you did just say, and it's probably something we should have also spoken about, but you said when you do go graduate and go work for your iwi, in terms of, uh, so, well, just say what you're studying, and then what yeah, was yeah. actually the catalyst for getting you into that line of work? Yeah, so um, I'm just finished my fourth year in medicine down here at Otago, and um, that takes up a big part of my day. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, in in the background of the last couple of years, I've started taking up more sort of real teaching, tutoring jobs and um, kind of culminated this year with um, some really cool events that we got to do with our cohort of Māori medical students. Mm. Um, we had our own kōrareo, mm. which was a huge thing um, for us. Um, um, we on Te Oranga organised that. I'm um, sit on the, well, th- this year I've sat on the Māori Medical Students Association cool. of like the nationwide one and the... Te Oranga Ki Otaka as well, the one for down here. Mm. And um, that kōrareo with Te Oranga was like incredible. These like 120 Māori medical students coming around and having wānanga up in the middle of Tūhoi. Mm. About, um, you know, got to meet Pō Temara and like all these guns. Mm. It was just, yeah, real, li- another sort of life-changing thing for us, yeah. For sure. And so for the people listening, um, do you just want to explain what Kura Reo is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then also, you know, you, you just dropped the name like Po Temara. Yeah. You know, Ta, ta Po Temara. Ta, ta, ta um, and who those people are and, and kind of what the Kura Reo movement is about? Yeah, so a, a Kura Reo, well, our Kura Reo, right, was um, just a weekend of as much Reo Māori as you can speak and learn, mm. basically. So uh, you have a, a wānanga, um, which is like a, a traditional... Um, learning medium where mm. you will just like go to a marae or go to a whatever venue and just smash out as much as you can learn for a mm. whole weekend like from nine to from sun up to sundown basically you're mm. just learning and um, a kurareo was a wānanga that's specifically focused towards revitalising te reo mm. and yeah just teaching as much as possible and yeah so our kurareo was for um, Māori medical students and so it did kind of focus a part on like Medical mm. on um, um, to deal in medical spaces sure. and things like that, but yeah. could deal were mm. you know pretty diverse. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then so you go into what was the you know what was the reasoning for going into the heart of Tuhoi to oh it was because one of the um oh it's just fun oh, okay. someone's right, right. yeah <laughs> just yeah who yeah. could get it sus yeah yeah pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Nice. And so for those things, you know, what is the future for? Because to host something like that is, is huge. Yeah, like a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of resource has to go into that. So, in terms of sustainability and being able to keep those things running over time, because you know you're only going to be a student for the next couple of years, um, but then you know getting other people through is there like a, a dream or a pipeline that you're trying to build? Yeah, succession planning is a big thing, and and a lot of the projects that I do. So, um, always trying to shoulder tap people mm. who might be good for a role, or sh- sh- people who will be keen, or um, just yeah, have a lot of time they can give into a kaupapa. Um With the te oranga stuff, it's kind of done differently depending on what like, students association you're with, but te oranga is, um, um, we have a lot of like punch lists and stuff like that sure. and like just always writing down stuff for the for the years coming up and um, yeah, like shoulder tapping is mm. a big thing, I suppose, and um, yeah. Yeah, and then the dream for medicine because, um, yeah. you know, it's, coming from a Pacific space uh, and knowing that a lot of the dreams for their children or grandchildren to become doctors mm. is always a huge push. But for, for yourself, you know, what was the, I guess, the motivations for getting into that line of uh, study? Yeah, well, I was I was, I was was actually keen on science to, to start out with. And then one of the ladies at, at Kohatsu, or, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, back when it was the Māori Health Workforce Development Unit, was like... Um, Oh, all your papers are going to be the same as first year house. So you might as well just right. do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so kind of, um, and then by the, by the time I got into house, I was like, oh no, I think that's what I want to do. I want to mm. do medicine, which is and it's really awesome. It's a good blend of doing the science, but also like doing a lot of people stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And do you find that you know being able to 
so kind of, kind of having your background and having that understanding of you know because Rio opens up so many doors of yeah. understanding of yeah. other people and other cultures and just yeah like. Yeah. For your interactions with people, do you find that it's given you like it's almost not a natural ability, but a more I guess uh, it's almost like a, a second nature in you? Um, I'm not gonna. Well, what's it? Well, ihara te kumare koe rum moto na kireka, bro. But um, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe mm. I can't really, I can't really give an answer to that. I don't think it. Um, I think it definitely helps me. Yeah, no, it doesn't help me understand people with different worldviews and things like that. Different, different yeah. cultures, like. Because, like I said, I kind of knew what it was like um, to not really have tikanga Māori in the household. Mm. And then all of a sudden to start having tikanga Māori in, mm. in the household. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate that when people have all these other sort of cultures and religious practices and mm. things like that. And I just, um, just yeah, close your mouth. <laughs> 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 just just be curious. And, um, yeah, mm. that's that's the biggest thing that I've learned is just be so just Aye. sit quietly and mm. um, yeah, learn. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I can re- remember being a kid and just having some of the most the biggest influences in your life, and you don't even realize how amazing these people are. Yeah. But how much of just because you're around them, you know, being that small person just around and like just absorbing a lot of that yeah. stuff. So you're so right. Like, I think I do think from a like an education privilege perspective, we do come in a lot of the times thinking, you know, oh, I know this or mm. I know that too, mm. and you always feel like, sorry, not you always, but like a lot of the time, the first instinct is to just jump in and say, this is this is the this is the solution right here. Yep. But you know, sometimes the the best approach is to actually take that step back and to see the overall landscape of the issue. Mm. No, that's awesome, bro. Um, so for for you right now, like you've been doing a lot of hands on stuff, um, and you know I know being in a lab and and all that sort of stuff is, you know that, that's one aspect of it. But then when you actually have to go out and do the practice, it's like anything. Like, do you find that um, having that clinical aspect or having that practical aspect with people um, is is like a like a very energizing, fulfilling thing for you? Yeah, mm. yeah. That's um that's the coolest thing about transitioning from the preclinical years like years one to three in medicine versus years four, five, and six, mm. is that you actually start learning on the, on the job mm. and you're in the hospital and seeing real people and things like that. It just, right. you know, now I don't I don't remember conditions and stuff like that. Oh, I was in this page of the textbooks. Oh, that person had that condition. It's mm. just so much easier to remember. And you, you start to build stories with mm. people, whanau and patients and things like that. And, yeah, it's helped my, my learning. I was just struggle street all the <laughs> yeah. first three years. And now I've, I feel like I've kind of come into my own a bit with my – medical learning and things like that just being around whānau is mm. really what um yeah drives me to keep studying what I study for sure and when you when you do get you know get that opportunity to to go out you know do you have um like a, like a plan of of where you want to go with the study like obviously you want to graduate but then in terms of the types of work you can do for transformation or even just to work in general yeah the old, what do you want to specialize in yeah, Christian yeah yeah I don't, I don't know probably gp i i, like, I say gp cuz that's what um I think I'd be most useful. Sure. And if that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Like, a, um, I feel like anyone can kind of be any profession, mm. but I feel like GP would probably suit like my lifestyle and whānau needs. And because mm. some of those other, being a cardiologist, being a surgeon is pretty rough on the, on the <laughs> personal life. I've, heard, I've heard some serious stories, eh, about yeah. like, wait, is there, a, I thought there were only 24 hours in a day and like yeah, the amount yeah. that they do, you're like, whoa. That's just out of it. Mm. Yeah, that was what the the surgical run that I just had taught me is that yeah, yeah, some of these aspects of medicine are just not for me. Mm. I want to be able to go and pick my kids up from school and for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure, man. And um, and part of th- so you you know you spoke about Fano before, and just one thing I want to get into because you know I've I've read a lot on language acquisition, mm. um, and I do know so for you you know to get to a stage of fluency or to get to a stage where you're extremely competent and you can actually start to hone that into different you know if I call it all, all that sort of stuff mm. for you um, not having whānau because that's almost like one of the first things that come up is it something that is spoken in the home uh, or is it something that you're completely uh, immersed with you know you can go to Farikura or, or something like that for you you know what were the key aspects of actually attaining that level um I gotta say, it probably would have been easier with Fano. Mm. Like my my real speaking friends were absolute lifesavers, mm. and you know, and um, I, luck, I was lucky enough last year to flat with one of my good mates who's a 
really good real speaker and me and him would talk all the time and mm. we did Te Pinaki Tanga together awesome. at real class and uh, it really t- kind of set me straight mm. in, in terms of oh man I really need to start bringing Te Reo into the, into the home more and, and you know lots of national um, initiatives like Mahuru Māori mm. things like that we really try and get behind mm. and um, Tuiki o Te Reo we really try to get behind that um, I'm really trying to um, my partner and I are both trying to bring more Reo into our lives mm. She um, had a different upbringing where her, both of her parents can speak, mm. but um, they never. Whenever their parents tried to speak Māori to them when they were kids, they just went, "Oh, why are you speaking Māori for? Speak <laughs> right, English, right, right. speak English." You know, mm. and so they they have they understand it, but mm. it's just getting the confidence to speak it again. I think. Mm. Is. So yeah, we're both coming from our own um, backgrounds, and um, but the big thing that's changed it for us is that uh, we we're just talking. My partner's expecting in December, so. Um, not a lot of time left now to kind of get ready for. Mm. We, we um, decided that we only want to speak to her in Te Reo. Right. So a lot of my whānau will not be able to do that. Mm. So with other people, you can speak whatever. You're going to learn English no matter what. Right. You know, you watch TV and stuff like that. You'll learn English, but yeah. with us and 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 our whare, we'll we'll speak Te Reo. Mm. That's what we really want to do. Um, and I kind of look up to my um, our uh, Pacifica mm. whānau because mm. a, a lot of like Pacific Fano, that's the way it is, you know. Mm. You speak Samoan at home, but everywhere else you speak English. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a, you know, that's an interesting thought and philosophy around that. You know, you you did say you will learn English because a lot of the mediums, a lot of everywhere we get information, you're surrounded yeah. by it. So it's almost like, you know, back in the days, if if you're saying we're only going to speak Te Reo Maori to our children, yeah, people will call you radical. Oh, like, yeah, how yeah. are they going to get anywhere in this world? So for you know, for you, if not that you'll ever run into people who do that because you probably they're probably not part of your life. But yeah. you know, when that thought does come up, because it happens everywhere, basically, where people don't see it as a, a useful, um, I guess, a useful tool. Mm. So for you, like, what are the the key the key reasons for doing that? Bro, right? Today, today was his like. Just paid a lot of my bills this year, you know. <laughs> right, right. Just first off, from practical stuff, Tadil has paid some of my bills this year. Mm. So, um, people, people say you won't get a job in Tadil Māori. There's portal here, there. That's just <laughs> absolute, yeah, cut. Yep, yep, but, yep. Um, yeah, I think yeah, uh, I don't even know where to start, bro. It, it's um, it opens so many more doors. Mm. You know, it doesn't shut any doors at all. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like. Tahimi Hinare says, um, Te reo ingarihi, te reo pata me te parao, ko te reo uh, Māori te reo wairua, mm. things like that um, kind of really resonate with me, I think. For sure. With lots of us, to be honest. But um, yeah, like English is everyday language. It's yeah. the bread and butter language. It's the language of cup of tea and things like that. But te reo Māori is the, the language of your, of your soul, mm. you know, te reo wairua. Mm. And um, that's, that's the main thing... Um, for me, in terms of with my teaching into medical school, or well, the teaching medical students rather, um, that's a big thing that um, I'm aware of is that a lot of the time, te reo Māori with our patients won't actually be a practical barrier, like a language barrier. Not a, a, It's quite rare that you would need an interpreter. Of course, there are people out there who only speak Māori and will only want to speak Māori when they go to the doctors, but um, you know, a lot of the time, they won't need an interpreter. So that's quite different to like some of our Pacific whānau, mm. who might have grandparents who don't speak English. Mm. Um, but the real, um, the reason why we teach it is because it's te reo mm. and we want Māori whānau to feel welcome in our healthcare system, mm. things like that. So, yeah, mm. without getting too much into, <laughs> into stuff I'm not really educated to speak <laughs> about, but, yeah. Mm. yeah. But the huge thing, is, like, you're not just, yeah, like I said before, you're not just learning the real, you're, you're learning a worldview. Like mm. everything that comes with oh, it, yeah. everything is grounded in you know so many layers of just complexity, and you know depending on the inflection, depending on how words are put together, the context of things like it's going to give you a completely different story. Mm. And if you can understand those nuances, you can understand and have more compassion mm. for someone and and what they're going through or their background in general. Now, so that's and and something you brought up, and I'd like you to to speak more on which you spoke a little bit. But the first time I actually saw you was on a. a a, a uni video, you know, talking about how you ran. I think it was an eight week yeah. real Maori course. Yeah. Um. And yeah. So what was was that part of your overall strategy as part of what you've been part of in terms of an exec, or was that a mm. standalone thing? 
So, um, yeah, we, um, it kind of just, it just happened. Like I wasn't on the, it, we started it last year okay. and I wasn't on any execs or anything last year, mm. but, um, we, I was talking to one of my, um, Māori peers and we were just, man, I wish there was more real content, like strictly real content mm. in our curriculum, but it's so hard to fit anything into the med school curriculum. Sure. You know, it's all, it's packed. Every module wants more time in the, in the curriculum. Um, so we just said, oh, well, we'll just do it ourselves. And so we just um, started out with these teddy bear hospital right. things where they get kids from um, kindies to mm. um, take their teddy bears along. We like play doctor. Right, and things like yeah, that. It's like yeah. a fun day for the preschools. But they wanted the kohanga to come, mm. the Māori preschools. And so we're like, oh, well, we're going to need to upskill our students on mm. um, on some real. So I taught that. And that was really, really popular. We like filled up one of the big lecture theatres with Toyota. Which is awesome, and after that, we were like, "Man, we there's enough Toyota King here that we can mm. make something out of this." And so we went on to make um, Te Reo Kia Ora, which was a uh, yeah an eight week Reo Māori absolute fundamentals course that goes just beyond Kei Te Pehi Aku, Kia Ora, mm. whatever. That's like the first lesson, and then the next seven are all about sort of questions: who, where, what, why, how, sentence structures, and things like that. And how to trying to be as practical as possible mm. to to use those little. Um, Sentences in Māori that will just mean the world mm. to to Fano who speak. Mm. Yeah. So that was the the background of what we wanted to do, and we repeated it this year with even more um, popularity and just success, and like just had so many, like filled so many seats with with how, how keen the Tauri were, and for us who were organising it, it was just a group of ragtag Tauri who put their <laughs> hand up. This year was more um, around the exec. Which mm. is why it's gonna succeed now, I think, because we got like I was talking about succession planning. Um, but yeah, it was literally just a bunch of us random Māori and Pākehā students who were just keen to put it on, and someone mm. did the kai, and someone did the room booking, and then we just rocked up and taught. And mm. Now, yeah, wow. here being the pretty face when they did all the <laughs> bloody work, but yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's and that stuff's so important, and I think you know that stuff that is gonna sit with those students for a very long time. Um, okay. with, they're going to go through it, and now just you know, if you put your if you put your kayako head on for mm. a second, and for them coming back, you know, if it's an eight week, if it's an eight week block, and say it's what one hour, two hours. A week? It was yeah, it was two hours. Yeah, so two hours a week, but we know that you know for you to actually come prepared and for you be able to be able to you know really grasp it and embrace it, you know, what were the things that you were uh, encouraging them to do so that they could you know keep a good grasp of it. Um, speak it mm. and find real buddies. Like just, you know, use the peers who are in the class with you uh, to bounce ideas off and bounce sentences off. And it was a real beginner's class, so that was a bit. It was a bit hard for them sometimes to, um, like use the deal. Mm. But you know, we we gave them that foundation, and and now they're confident enough to to use little sentences here and there in the hospitals with yeah. our kuya and komata who come in, which is awesome. Mm. Made it all work after when I, in the middle of when we were teaching this year's course, I had an interaction with a kui at the hospital who um, I just she was Maori and I I could tell by her English accent that she spoke Maori mm. or and um but just to check anyway, I just said to her, "Oh no, here queer fire. Where are you from?" And then she just like turned around and got the fright of her life, bro. <laughs> she, um and um jumped out of her skin almost, and she was. She said, oh, no, Waikato. And mm. I, I said, oh, true, no, blah, 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 blah. And we just got talking and then just spoke just in te reo only for like a good like five, ten minutes. I completely lost the doctors I was trying to follow, but <laughs> yeah. I just didn't even care about them anymore. I was just, you know, and it just like made both of our day. Mm. And then she brought in her husband when he came in and we just had this big mm. yarn about it. And it was that was the the big reason. It's like, man, this is why we are, we're doing this. Because mm. she will go home and, you know, she would have she would have had that much more of a positive experience when she had, you know, this run in with the healthcare system. So, mm. yeah, because yeah. that is something that comes across, and and this is statistic. Like I'm not talking out of my ass and just saying like, oh, that, there's a negative experience, but there are plenty of there's plenty of research out there that you know, in terms of Pacific and Maori engagement with the health system, mm. you know, there are um, it's disproportionate in terms of people saying they had a negative experience with the health system, and that's um, also becomes a hindrance. And if we look at um, you know the the reasons they're not accessing healthcare, and then they need more healthcare. So the disparity is bigger, and those are things that people say. Well, if they just took themselves to get, and it's like no, mm. it's it's bigger than that. And this is all part of it. It's actually having the tools there for when this one time or when this multiple times come up, 
you know, you're going to be equipped to actually make them feel like they belong here mm. and that this is a pathway to, to better health. Mm-hmm. Man, that's, that's powerful. Yeah, that was a, that was a cool one. I, I've had a few more like that, but that was like the first one and it was just the fact that it was while we were teaching that class, it was just, yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I remember that for forever probably. Yeah. And um, yeah. And then going through, so you, you're going through, you're getting, you're getting, um, so before we actually get into, you know, where you are now to, to actually yeah. part of your journey, because I think that's the fascinating part is yeah. like, it's so easy for you maybe like, because you're there, you know, but yeah. for other people listening, like, wait, ho- hold on. Wait, yeah, I don't got, think I'm there. Oh, okay. I, no, you're, but, I don't like, think I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. too humble, mate. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. I, I got to, I get humbled every day by my partner <laughs> oh, right. okay, and, okay. And, and everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're going through and then what is... So, like, to actually sign up to different things as well, to know that you're going to go get additional help. Uh, yeah. And there's a possibility that, especially if you go into immersion, um, it's, you know, you, you're going to sit there. There's going to be times where you feel alone. There's going to be times where, you know, you think you think about what children have to go through. You know when they kick a tantrum mm. because they just don't have the words to express what they're trying to say? Mm. There are times that you're going to go through that and you're putting your, you're putting your hand up by signing up to go to uh, Wananga or Aotearoa Mm. When you you know to start, was that just because you didn't have enough resources, or was there a group of you? How did that initiate? Yeah, I always had at least one person. I think there was. Um, if I just focus on that part of the question, is that the doing it yourself is so so much harder. Mm. Um, you can obviously do it by yourself, but yeah, it, it made it that much easier that I had like at least one friend who I could speak to deal to at school. Mm. Um, so I had my mates in Māori class. The Māori class went from like 10 people in year 11 to mm. like three people to two people in like the school of 800 mm. by the time we were in year 13. And um, But me and one of my mates just would try and speak a lot and we did kabaka together and things like that. And coming to uni, um, meeting um, my mate Nico, who I flattered with last year and being able to go to classes with him, we'd like hold each other accountable. It's mm. like having a gym buddy or something, you know, mm. you always pushing each other to do more and um, occasionally when I teach him something I just go yes and, you know things <laughs> like that uh, but yeah there's there's been years there's been times where it's just been me and um, those were the years where I kind of it was I just noticed that my idea wasn't wasn't improving as much mm. um, this year has been a little bit like that just because um, uh, you know I, I've stepped out I've done there's no more classes I can do sure. in, in Dunedin Um Outside of doing a master's uh, or doing the third year Māori uh, paper at the uni, mm. um, there's not really anything else I can do from and be a student in something now. So now mm. I kind of have turned around and started to teach more and stuff like that. Mm. Kind of just in a selfish way so I can be around to deal more, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, it, it's a good question, man. It, um, it does get hard when um, when it feels like it's just you. Right. And it feels like sometimes you go, oh, what's the point? And you know, like... People will t- people love to to talk you down for things like that. Why don't you go learn French? At least you can go somewhere and bloody mm. talk that language. It's like no, learning French means nothing to me. Like mm. learning to do Maori is literally like one of the one of the most like spirit. I'll call it like a spiritual experience almost. It's like regaining my deal, mm. you know, for my whanau for the like the last three generations of my whanau who have been able to speak because my great great grandma thought that you know she had to pretend to be Pākehā to mm. fit in with this Irish bloke that she married, you know? Mm. And um, stories about her from my aunties and things like that, that just, they're what, what also what keep me going about, um, you know, how she'd make comments here and there about, you know, she'd put on makeup and things like that mm. just to, like, fit in with the, like, her partner's, or her husband's Pākehā family, mm. things like that. And, um... Yeah, I'd like to think she would be very proud of me and my whanau and what we've done. Mm. Um, kind of, almost like for, for her in a way. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, just because I think it's a shame that my um, koro didn't get to grow up with his deal. He he was very proud of where he came from, but, mm. you know, and he he always pushed me to keep going mm. um, with my deal and things like that. And at his tangi this year, I got to stand up and I got to farewell him properly mm. in his mum's deal mm. and his brother stood up and his brother just gave us this just kind of let let go you know and just just told us about um kind of what it was like for them growing up mm. it was just 
Yeah, it's been a big year, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's been a big year. Yeah. But being being able to to give a a good fight call at all. Mm. I'm not a fight call. I'll go just me, just mm. farewell farewelling him, and then and giving a translation for it afterwards, mm. and showing them that the real was just as good as the English. Mm. You know, like the I I could be eloquent in Maori as well. You know, mm. I can speak fancy in either. Yeah, and and people. Well, you know, coming up to me, I think, oh yeah, it's so cool. It's like, yeah, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, not that it's like a bloody party trick, but mm. yeah, that was that was something special for me when sure. I wasn't between my crying. Yeah, yeah. But the explanation about that, you know, something I love about it is is it's not, you know, I'm not learning Maori so that I can speak Maori and everyone would be like, whoa, he's cool, he can speak Maori. Like that, that's a byproduct of it. Mm. But it's the, it's all these other things. It's being able to, to provide or being able to think, you know, intergenerationally mm. um, or being able to connect a whole bunch of people back to, you know, where there's kind of been a, a bit of a force field because there's, there's been that, um, kind, yeah, that difference in, in worldview. Man, that's, oh, sheesh. I mm. got shivers again. But, um, so when you are going through it, and just for you know people listening, and you know it, it sounds difficult, and anything that's worth having, you know, is not going to be easy. But when you were, you know, getting in, finding yourself getting into those pits of, you know, you said you just had a purpose there, but then more like things that you would just do besides, you know, having a friend, uh, but then feeling like, you know, uh, instead of going back into your mind, what I'm trying to say is, was there like a habit that you would go through? To make sure that you're like staying consistent, um, I'm pretty slack. That's why it took me so long to <laughs> to get to a level where I could I could maybe say I'm fluent. Sometimes mm. you know, I still hate that word fluent. You know, because mm. um, people ask me what that word mean. Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen that word in my life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what does my name mean in Maori? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a cool experience with one of my uh, Samoan uh, peers. Mm. Uh, we were translating her name from Samoan into Maori, and it fit like perfectly. It was just, oh, cool. and she was like, "Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah." It was really cool. Um, I forgot what you were saying before that. Just, so <laughs> just like like little practical tips or things, habits that you built yeah. um, to um, help you. Not really. Uh, cue cards a little bit, mm. but um, like I said, I, I'm too lazy to <laughs> to get up and like write. Like people put like uh, labels on things in the house. Mm. I never did that. Um, I just kind of, like I said, tried to do it naturally. Mm. And by naturally, I mean like the least... Um, work intensive way possible. Sure, just just speak real more and mm. listen to real podcasts and things like that. And yeah, watch to do on TV and read lots of real things. And mm. I'm a bit slack on on my on that sort of stuff this year. But yeah, yeah. No, that's that's all right. It's all right. And you, you put it out there. Yeah. Um, the whole cards on the yeah. You know, oh, sorry, that's a that's a whole different co And no, actually, like. Putting cards, on, I was the same with exercises where yeah. people would, would just like do so much, but then it almost gets to a point where because the card is there, you don't have to learn it. Mm. So it's like, it's always going to be there. Yeah, well, the trick with the cards and labelling things is that you take them off. Yeah, like you, you, yeah, you, you have you, to. One by one, you, you go and take them off and mm. you have to sit there in a minute and try to remember <laughs> it. But yeah, there's, there's heaps of things you can do. Like, mm. um, But I the way that we're doing it with me and my partner is we try to just, yeah, just use sentences mm. and bit by bit, stay mm. scale them up because mm. we want to give. You don't need, um, especially with like a having a kid. Mm. You know, you don't need really fancy deal mm. to speak to a kid. You just need to have a good, broad, basic, uh, you know, knowledge of basic deal, basic mm. terms and describing words and things like that. And some really like you could get off with one sentence structure probably for sure for like you know until they're like ten. Mm. <laughs> but um, well, I should go. I don't know what I'm talking about, but um, <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, and and that's something that something else, you know, like a lot of the time when people try to learn vocabulary or, or they're trying to learn a language, like it's, it was like you were saying with the med stuff, where like it has to be suitable for the context or for the practical elements of that context. So you know, you're you're probably gonna you could be well versed in like all these different things, but then once you have a child growing up, you know, what are the things that they're into? You know. Um, you might not know the name or the kupu for different things at a playground. Mm. And that's where you're going to be going off. And so it's, yeah. it's really the context that you're applying it in, right? I know I've got the steepest learning curve ahead of me. <laughs> I'm about to get humbled really quick by yeah. having a kid and, you know, mm. realise I don't know how to say a lot of things at the <laughs> playground. Yeah. Or, you know, you only really learn the deal of the contexts which you're in. Eh? Absolutely. Like, you, like, I couldn't tell you anything about, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of kupu about 
types of trees or mm. you know types of rongoa and stuff like that that mm. I would would never clue about. I've mm. never done any of that. I've done a tiny tiny amount of that stuff. So yeah, it's hard. And and having a kid, um, I've been told is the best thing you can do for your deal nice. is to have a kid and really try to stick to yeah. um, giving them the deal and the gifts that you might not have had. Um, because yeah, yeah, it forces you to learn stuff, and you start watching the kids' shows with them. And today, yeah, yeah, this recent movement that we've had with um, Disney Deal Māori, oh, yes. that's been massive. We oh, talking about crying the heaps, but we, we we shed a tear when we went to see Frozen, Frozen recently. Yeah, we hadn't seen any of the other ones, and so that was like just such a shock. I was like, in the movie, I'm listening to it in Māori without subtitles or anything like that, and mm. it was awesome. Mm. Oh, I take my hat off to all those people. It's like uh, I'm so. I'm jealous, like that. We, I didn't have that yeah. in a way, but um, yeah, I just think it's so so awesome, and I hope that they keep doing and do with every Disney movie that they can get their hands on. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, that 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 is really magical, and that's something that you know I've been sharing and just so proud of, and just so like yes, and mm. it's like seeing it on the big screen and seeing it as like this is part of every day. Like this could be part of every day for everyone to enjoy. Mm. Um so that stuff yeah that that stuff really gets you going. Um now something that I'm not sure if you've ever encountered it but it's something that I had to so I physically was like a pale Cook Islander. Mm. Uh, my mum had it as well. Mm. She's like, we just like carried our Scottish genes really hard and everyone would be like, oh, who's that Papa our boy? Knowing Papa that. R. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so and then they'll be like, oh yeah, he came and opened the door and then just like, okay, this guy's just another, like he must be a son of an expat or something like <laughs> that. And I just like didn't have the physical features of Yo, someone. You're, one to, bro, you're talking to me. Right? <laughs> so this is where I'm getting to. <laughs> yeah. You know, having, so for for the listeners, sorry, um, I'm sitting with, um, just look at the picture. But, you know, <laughs> someone who doesn't physically scream. Nah, not at all. Yeah. Oh, some people say my nose, I've got my... Okay, okay. grandma's nose, but um, nah, nah, not at all. But I just, I, I love it. It, it cracks. Well, that's I should probably be careful about what I say, but <laughs> it, it, I love it when I get to surprise people. Yes. I should say, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm very aware that um, I I do have uh, like a good amount of privilege that people don't. Um, what do they call it? They call it like white passing or something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's some term for it, but um, you know, like people won't treat me differently unless I make it known to them that I'm Māori or that I speak Māori or something like that. Mm. So I catch out a lot of people. Mm. I catch out a lot of people who just say say things when they think they're talking to someone who's going to agree with them. Mm. And I say, bro, what are you on about? You know? Mm. Or, yeah, well, I just start speaking Māori to them and they just go, oh, oops. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I see it a lot. My partner's a lot um, darker than me. And so I, I, I was actually kind of shocked. at. I just, I don't know. I just never thought that people are still on the street outwardly racist to people. Sure. Like, uh, it, it, it kind of blew me away that, that people still talk to people like that, you know, and, um, yeah, my partner's been, like, you know, I would say, like, abused behind her back and to her face as well, mm. just for no other reason than she's got dark skin. Sure. And, um, yeah, it's, it's it, um, it made me realise, like, oh, I've never actually had that happen to me before. Right. And I might not even realise, and you know, till we started dating, mm. that, that it's actually a lot more than I thought it was. You know, mm. so there's that side of it. There's also the other side of it where um, I try to keep a positive light and try to easy for me to say, yeah, but um, I try to keep a positive light and use um, my appearances to encourage people that anyone can speak to deal. Um, you know, even though you might not. F- physically fit mm. the part but um i try to use that in a in a positive way where i can uh, be a i suppose be a be a role model for mm. my parkour colleagues and my maori colleagues who feel disconnected for whatever reason you know mm. sorry but you know being pale is not an excuse anymore being living on the other side of the country is not an excuse anymore mm. you, there's enough resources to do it so not it's getting easier mm. you know to to learn to deal and to reconnect um um or just learn someone else's culture you know but mm. uh yeah, it's it's not an excuse anymore. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna put it out there. Mm. You can uh, do it. You can definitely do it for sure, man. That's so cool. Um, and then just to just to switch switch a little yeah. bit, you know, something that when I when I first you know saw you online, because I, I wanted to ask you, like, do you even have time to have hobbies? Because like you've got all these other things going on, and we'll get into games, your bro. teaching sh- soon. Yeah. But I saw you also have a side page, <laughs> <laughs> Nick's Harkady. Yeah, Nick's so, Harkady. So where did where did that come from? 
Uh, it, was a, it was a lockdown thing and okay. then it was fun. So, yeah. But my brother's a chef and so oh, I'm okay. always trying to impress him. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, um, give us a follow. Nick's Hakari on Insta. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it was a joke. And yeah. then it just, we, we enjoyed it. And so me and the fight mates jump on sometimes and mm. made some wicked wings yesterday. <laughs> blue cheese sauce. Oh, was good. But no, yeah, I play video games. It's my, my release. Oh, nice. So I, yeah. Uh, uh, not really like hundies. But mm. um. And other than that, yeah, video was a hobby as well. Mm. Um, um, I just hope I hope that it stays like that because I can definitely see myself doing more video work in the mm. future. But I hope that it stays. It's still fun and it's a hobby. Like I'm very again privileged to have a different thing as my my main hustle, mm. and I can do Māori on the side. And so, you know, I feel for my mates who do Māori nine to five, and then you know, like they they kind of get to see the not so fun parts of it sometimes mm. like having to deal with um having to just be a minority in a larger system yeah kind of sucks sometimes apparently you know and sure. and, and um i kind of get to see the fun parts of it mm. definitely um i get to come in and just teach to do and mm. you know do something so yeah um hobbies i don't know I try to pick up golf, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> golf was the huge thing for everyone. Eh? It is, man. Something to get you out and about. Must Go be getting f- older. Yeah. Oh, man. Must be hitting that time. Um, yeah. Th- th- I think you, you're right with, with trying to keep things that you are passionate and that you love, um, keeping that as a hobby and keeping that as something that, you know, I think uh, I was the same when I when I graduated with all my stuff and all I did was like exercise. But exercise was also my outlet. Mm. So then it got to the point where, I was like, am I even working anymore? Like, am I still working or am I on my off time? And then it was hard to like distinguish the differences in time of whether I was here to relax or if I was doing mahi. Mm. And then that just like, it just gets to you a little bit. So being able to have that little side thing is cool. And for, you know, just how you are teaching, is there, like, was that just informal something or have you got a little something going on that we need to, or do you just want to nah, keep it pretty nah, well, well, yeah, it's, it's all pretty word of mouth stuff yeah. pretty chill i do some um so i taught i did te reo kia ora and i did the teddy bear classes and that's um just like the students association sure. just pay for that and um i did uh i teach the bioethics department which has been really really cool um wow. the uni but the, there's like the, like five of them mm. who like really re- like religiously come and they've come a long way in a year mm. and um it's awesome to see but um that i gotta be honest it's um um, I like I teach them and I also do some private tutoring stuff just with a um a girl who doesn't have a Māori teacher at her school. Cool. And so um the difference between those two groups, the older people and the like younger people, she's like year ten or something like that, it, she would go through content twice as fast. Really? And so my struggle for her is having enough stuff to sure. keep her keep her going because she learns so quickly. Mm. But um like with with the um the other people, it's like, um, it's like normal pace. Sure. But so that's, I suppose, what um, what I'm trying to get out of this is like, if you're younger, start learning to do now, mm. because you know when you've got a billion other things to worry about when you're older, like it's a harder, it's For harder, sure. especially when you're only doing an hour a week, yeah, and half time to get cancelled anyway, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's hard, man. But they've done incredible. Those guys have come a long way. We were trying to translate um, 35 by. Rob Luhan. Oh yeah, 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 nice. Yeah, in the class the other day, and they're doing a pretty good job. Mm. So. Man, how pow- yeah, that stuff's powerful. But yeah, you, you're so right that the the ability to pick up different skills, like when you are younger, when you just, and it's almost like you have no. It's like you're. Uh, I remember like starting new things like skateboarding and all that sort of stuff. Like you don't know what it's like to hurt. So mm. like you just try everything and then you're like, oh, that would be interesting if I could do that. So like you have almost like a, an inquisitive mind as well, but you're also just like able to take it all in because you're not worried about a bajillion things you're just like oh this is what i'm here to do Mm. and now bro that's so cool um and in terms of this uh thinking about you know where you want to go and and you know if you have any role models who who helped you get started if like is there is there anyone in particular or any uh ropu in particular that you know really helped keep that fire burning in you uh, literally everyone. Yeah. It's a bit of a dry answer, sorry, but there's I'm amazed at the e- amount of excellence that's out there with our, amongst our Tawira and just everyone is just so. Uh, it, all my mates are always positive influences on me, and mm. um, you know, 
but I suppose like bigger influences like my um, koro was a very um, big influence for me. Even though he didn't speak that much to do, he was always like pushing me and, and mm. getting me to, you know, sit down and talk to me and say, hey, hey, it's really awesome that you're doing this. Like we want mm. you to, we really want you to keep going with this and things like that. So that was one of the big reasons for me to keep going. And um, also I got a meeting um, ta te ahurangi, ahurangi te mm. at our, our thing in Whakatane this year was was pretty awesome and like getting to sit down with him between classes and like just just listen to mm. his reel for starters is so awesome but all of his other experiences as well was just sure. really eye-opening to the world of possibilities that's out there and um he's an outstanding dude and um all of our exec all awesome like take my hat off to every single person of all the different Māori execs and stuff I've been on mm. um just like I said being on the national thing this year was just meeting all these people was like damn these guys are on like mm. they just do so much stuff and you know, I look up to my peers in that respect sure just they I think I do a lot of extracurricular stuff but they just blow it out the park man mm. yeah no, there's a lot of cool people there's a very like there are a lot of cool people and I know that you know you're extremely you seem pretty pretty humble but like I think to be able to you know, acknowledge those people and see what they did for you so that you, you know, when you do start to get to a position where, you know, you can, you're already starting to give back, which is like, that's the, it's almost like the pinnacle of, of why we learn is so that we can share it in some point. And, you know, it may not be now, there may come a time where there is the right time to do that. So no, I really appreciate those thoughts. And then something that I ask everyone on this podcast is what is something you do every day or close to every day that helps you feel like you've optimized the day? Oh, that is a great one. I should, Oh man, I, uh, I should probably find something. <laughs> I should find something quick. Mm. Um, I think. Um, oh yeah, um, I get up early and I clean the house. Ah. Um, not early, early, not every day as well. My partner will laugh when she hears me say <laughs> that. But um, yeah, I, I kind of need to be productive. I find it hard to switch off sometimes. That she especially. Like now, straight after that exam period, like mm. I gotta do something. I gotta, um, like clean or cook or mm. just busy myself. Otherwise, I'll just sit there and go crazy. Or for sure. But nah, I probably um could have some some healthier, <laughs> like um, healthier pr- productive productive habits. So I just don't. Mm. Yeah. You don't video games or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's always good, but like, is there, you know, you, you do that stuff, but is there something that maybe like, you know, once you've done it, you're always, you're always just like, ah, oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, speaking, ah, oh, it's, yeah, surprise, surprise, but speaking to deal, mm. learning karakia, reading some real books that I've got. And um, after, after I do that, um, or like writing things mm. um, in to deal sometimes is, yeah, I, if I've done that, I feel like yeah, that was that was really cool. That's my, cool. Cup, my cup feels a lot more full. Yeah, when I do things like that. No, that yeah, that's magical stuff. And sorry, a quick one just came yeah, into my no, mind just as I said. Do you dream in the real Māori? I got a cool flavor that. Here uh, we go. So when when I was at hostel, I was a uh, there was there was one other guy who spoke mm. Māori, but he left when I was like year eleven. So it was just me speaking te reo in the hostel, and I did. And you're like year eleven or twelve, I think. I did Mahuru Māori, and mm. I was like, "Oh, I'm going to be so staunch about this." And I didn't talk to anyone in the hostel in English for like like three weeks out of the four weeks. Mm. And then eventually, I had to do bilingual because we had like, and in my classes and stuff, I wouldn't speak English, mm. and none of the teachers could understand me apart from the um, Māori teacher. Mm. And um, and uh, yeah, it was yeah. At by the end of that month, that was the big turning point for me. Was doing anything immersive because mm. my brain was just like dying to know how to say something and mm. you know dying to like communicate or something i taught my mates we were playing uh zombies back up zombies and i'd, I'd teach him <laughs> oh hoko te kuaha, hoko <laughs> by the door like yeah, by the yeah. you know and, and like teach him words with about zombies and stuff like that so we could play together and mm. um yeah kind of lost some of that staunchness i think uh, it's a bit harder now to to be that staunch mm. in like the in my studies and things like that. For sure, for sure, kick me out. But um, during that month, getting back to the story, um, by the end of that month, I had my first like dreams and to deal like like a few nights in a row, mm. and those were just like most out of dreams. I was like meeting my supernova, my dreams, and talking to them and to deal and like 
and I, I sometimes I, I have dreams where I um I just call them the real dreams and you know I have dreams and I talking to people and I can't understand the deal and I I wake up in the morning and sometimes I like look up a kupu that I remember from my dream and it's some kupu I don't remember hearing ever and mm. it's just the most out of it mm. experiences right man. that's that next level stuff right there yeah man yeah what a way to end and I'm, yeah. I'm so glad that you know I asked that because every time I think about doorways into you know someone's where, where they are and where they're thinking and, and whether their whakaro is, is truly you know in that realm yeah, As I think it. Yeah, what your dream speaks to it. So if you're having those, man, that's a that's a cool place to be. No, man, I've I've really really appreciated the time. Thank you mm. for coming in, and I know that you're heading off uh, tomorrow. And we've we've been trying to get this going, and we finally made it work. Yeah, I'm and glad, it, and it was definitely worth it, my bro. And I'm yeah, very very proud of everything that you're doing. Oh, um, awesome. All the best, and I'm and I'm looking forward to when you bring a little peppy into the world and awesome. um, and seeing how that all goes. So congratulations, and uh, yeah. all the best for your future, bro. Thank you, bro. Awesome. Kia ora.